and welcome to the Merry Boozers RC channel, everybody. How is your week going? Um, welcome back, Farmer Rose. I see you, or Farmer's RC channel. He changed the name, but welcome back to the Boozer Barracks. Um, good night, and good to see everyone. Uh, it's been a fun week here at the Merry Boozers channel. Um, got the F-18 finished assembling. It's over here to the side. Uh, we've got this new timber in the box that we've been looking to get out and going. Um, and I got a new slot car, which is always a great night. <laughs> so yeah, it's just been a fun week. Wild Bill, how are you doing? Guys, it's always good to see you. Dennis Farley, he is coming to visit us in a little over, what is it, three weeks now, Dennis? We're getting close. For you guys that don't know, the Mary Boos are flying, coming up here in just a few weeks. Um, November 21st and 22nd. Lori's got the flyer. We'll pop it up on the screen here in a minute. But, uh, yeah. There you go. Boop. There you go. November 21st and 22nd. They are letting people come that Friday also if you wanted to come a day early and spend another day at the event. Uh, that will be okay. It has been okay. Um, but the actual event is Saturday and Sunday. So, yeah. I broke one of his cars. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> oh, man. Thanks, Farmer Man. Oh, we got a new one. I like the Papa Dots one. I haven't seen that, I don't think. Thank you, Farmer Man. Yeah, Kevin came over uh, this week. Yeah, sad day for us, though. He was, he was officially moving to Tennessee. Um, but he did come by and run some slot cars with us before he left. Um, George Watts is finishing up his OMP Bighorn. Program Crow, looking forward to playing with it. Yeah, man, George Watts, that, that OMP Bighorn has been a lot of fun. We really did enjoy it. Actually, Lori edited up another video of it today where I got a little bit more crazy with it. Uh, still kind of getting there every day, a little bit more. Um, but yeah, she did a good job on that edit. We also have some slot car videos coming. We've got jet assemblies. we got all kinds of stuff all over the place. So it's, it's hey. Like I said, it's a great time to be in the RC uh, hobby. There's all kinds of stuff to be playing with right now, not just airplanes. We still love our airplanes, don't get me wrong. Uh, speaking of airplanes, I did get the motors and the ESCs for the HE-111. Um, so Papa gets back this week, and I believe it's this week he gets back. It might be at the end of the week, but I've got him motors for the HE-111. Uh, I've got him the motors, the servos, and everything for the Westland. Uh, if y'all remember us unboxing that. So he's going to be working, working, working. And uh, I started working on the Storch again to get uh, the new receiver put into it. So I'm pulling the UBEC out of it. We're going to put that in the B25 from LX. Um, and then that airplane will be ready to go. So we've been working on airplanes. We haven't been doing too much flying. Over the past week, we've been working on a lot of airplanes here at the shop to get ready. Um, for the Boozer Flying, I want to have, you know, my Nexa P-47, and I want to have the Black Horse HE-111, and I want to have my uh, Phoenix Models Westland at the event, and all my big balsa planes, and Dad really wants to have his B-25 at the event, so I've been working on that. Yeah, what channel do you use for the flaps? Ox-1? Um, let's see, if I remember right, I had to use... Ox 1 and Ox 2 for flaps because I actually, no, I'm trying to remember right now. I set that up where all four aileron, the, the, the two ailerons were in their own channel and the two flaps were in their own channel. And I have to go back and look because I can't remember how I set that up on the big horn. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to use a channel per control surface on the big horn if you want to be able to do crow full length ailerons, and normal flaps. You're going to need one channel for every one. And I, like I said, I can't remember off the top of my head how I set that up, but yeah, that is how it works. GB Linden, welcome to the show, sir. Always good to see you, Ryan. Let's see. Yeah, guys, it's always fun as always. Let's see. Let's go down our Boozer Barracks members, as we do each week. Uh, Michael Reitzka, Guniak33, the fiery booty. Marcus Green, J Maniacs RC or Jermaine Spencer, Mike SSI, Spencer Keith, Pterodactyl44, George Watts, 
Always in here every week, George. Good to see you, sir. Uh, we got a new one here, Scott Clubin. He's a new member. He's been joining since, I guess, two weeks ago now. And we didn't add him to the list, but Lori was trying to remind me. <laughs> Where was that? Gav Street, RC, Pay It Forward, Joe Pellegrino, Kevin Farrows, William Margita, Dave Kell Whiskey. Speaking of Dave, so he is not working weekends anymore, so hopefully he's with us tonight. Uh, I was talking to him earlier, actually. Will Engel, David Martin Graff, Joseph Youngblood RC, the Farmer Man RC channel. Kill me, where him men? I can't ever get his name right every week, but one of these weeks I'll get it, I guess. Sage Creek outdoors and Ken Sprouse Jr. So thank you all of you Boozer Barracks members for the support. We really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, and it's awesome that we finally got our live show fixed. This was our biggest issue that we have been having is uh, the live show, but we finally got everything fixed with Dave Kowiski's help and we are back to rocking and rolling and I'm so happy about it. So. I'm going to do a quick little thing here tonight. Um, guys, be looking forward to tomorrow. I'm going to put out a new Carrera car uh, show for you. It's going to kind of explain how these actually get set up. But I did get a new one in, and I wanted to show it to you because I was super excited. Um, let's see, Lori. Oh, you want to do that first? We can show that, too. Uh, Dave Kowiski has been really asking Miss Lori for a while to make him some Corsair merch. So if any of you guys have been wanting some Corsair merchandise, Lori has made it, um, and there it is. We've got a Corsair face mask, uh, we've got a Corsair scarf thing that goes over your face, I don't really know what they call that. Neck gator. Neck gator, there you go. T-shirt. Did you put the whistling death on the back? I think you did. Didn't I you? Done there that. you go. It's got whistling death on the back. And then the long sleeve version of it for you guys up in the Arctic tundra of the frozen north. Uh, I, I have never worn a long sleeve shirt in at least two years now. It's amazing. I don't miss it. But yeah, so we had been requested for that and so Lori has made them. So if any of you guys have wanted some Corsair merch, we've got it now. So I guess we're going to go to the top shop real quick and uh, take a look at this new pretty car. We got the Daytona. So let's see. I'm going to stand up. Ta -da. So yeah. Man, these Carrera cars just blow me away, guys. The details of them. The little drivers. This one's got side pipes. Nice rubber tires as always. But yeah, I had to have this when I saw the Daytona. This is one I really wanted. Uh, the one thing that's a little bit of a downfall on this car over the other ones is there's no lights. These are actually grills up here, not lights. So when you're racing at night with this one, man, you better have some good track lights because there are no tail lights and no headlights. You can see they're just metal blocked off, which the real race cars were like this too. But yeah, I love the details of these cars. If, let me see. The nice thing is this big gigantic wing pops off so you don't end up breaking it. Now you can kind of see that roll cage inside of it. Totally sweet. All them sponsors. Maybe. There it goes. All the sponsors. Anyway, guys. I wanted y'all to see it. It's a new car here. I've really been digging it. Um, we also have been trying some magnet-free racing this week. So we took the magnets out of all the cars. And they sure do slide all over the track now. But uh, yeah, there's your IR sensor for the digital cars. Uh, the switch, like always, to be able to change them from digital to analog. If you want to run them on like a scale electrics track, you can. Anyway, pretty darn sweet, guys. Just wanted to show you that for a second. And I guess real quick, while we got it on the top. Oh yeah, she's all together. Me and Lori filmed the assembly video earlier on the F-18. So yeah, sweet, sweet, sweet. Excited to fly that one in the very near future. Back to the front, Lori. If you don't mind, sorry to bother your chat, but yeah. 
Super exciting, guys. Uh, I've been having so much fun with that slot car track. The guys that come over, uh, my neighbor comes over at least once a week, maybe twice a week, and we race cars, and it's just always such a fun time. Um, you know, and uh, hopefully we can get some more guys to come over and do it in the future. So, yeah. Let's see. Cold, rainy week. Michael, have you flown your F4 yet? Oh! I guess I could announce that too. Speaking of F4s and Michael, he likes to win everything. It's either him or Jeff's Custom RC, but guys, we have a giveaway coming up. It will be at 5,000 subscribers. What do you think it's going to be? Any guesses? Let's, let's have some fun with this for a minute. Speaking of Michael and his F4. So, I have to give a big shout out to Mr. Faros. He has graciously donated us an airplane to give away at 5,000 subscribers. What do you think it's going to be, guys? It's going to be pretty cool. Live from Dallas, Texas, Papa Boozer. Yeah. And I know it's a few seconds behind for when I get to see what y'all's responses are, but I'll wait. Because it's going to be good. But let's see if anybody guesses it. What do you think we're going to give away at 5,000 subscribers? Well, there's some, there's some guesses coming. Wouldn't you know? It might even already be on the screen. <laughs> HSD T33. Not quite that good. <laughs> do you think you should give away a turbo timber? Yeah, that, that wouldn't be bad either. The turbo timber, yeah. Did Wes get a haircut? Yeah, I did. Actually, I got this haircut via Lori. She gave it to me on the front porch. So those of you that were guessing, we are going to give away one of these right here. That's right. We're giving away an E-Flight F-18, guys. It will not be the Blue Angel. It will be the gray version. Uh, it's at Papa's house. Currently, we're trying to figure out if we're going to custom paint the entire airplane, too, before we give it away, what we're going to paint it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to give away a Papa pimped out, dotted F-18, you know, airbrushed. We'll do the whole deal. Um, but, yeah, we're going to be giving one of these away at 5000 or around there. Kind of probably like last time where we're not going to make a big deal out of it. We always want our giveaways to go to you, our subscribers, and when we promote that we're giving an airplane away, then we end up with 10 bazillion people in here that don't ever watch us. So yeah, when we, when we give the airplane away, it'll be one of those nights where you're going to just be watching and, we, and we're going to give away an airplane randomly. So yeah, our next giveaway... I know it sounds like a lot to say 5,000, but we're getting around 200 subscribers a month right now. So I don't see it being much longer. And we need a little bit of time to build the airplane still. Um, but yeah, we're going to be giving one of these bad boys away. So thank you, Mr. Ferros, for making that happen. We really do appreciate it, sir. And uh, I look forward to getting to do that for you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope you all are excited for an F-18 giveaway. So, let's get this out of the box, or get the box over here at least. Eh. So Papa is still in Texas, but he is coming back eventually. And uh, here, let me turn this this way so y'all can actually see me. When he does, this has floats, and the Otter has floats, and Dad really wants to go float flying with these airplanes. So, I may assemble this one on floats first. Uh, the Otter is currently on wheels, um, but the Otter is going to be Dad's airplane. He really wanted that one, and uh, so I'll be giving it to him with the floats and everything, and he can convert it over. Definitely need some Papa Nose Art. Hey, speaking of Papa Nose Art, if y'all haven't checked out Cali Graphics lately, there are some not safe for work nose arts now. <laughs> we can't show that. On we the can't side. show them to you here, but you could go look them up yourselves. I guess for five thousand dollars. What? 
I guess I missed that one, Papa. You could just skip the formalities and give it to me. Yeah, Air Marshal, you don't win anything. We already know. If you want to skip the 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 the, the well, I can't talk right now. If you want to skip the formalities, we should either give it to Jeff or Michael Reitzka because they win everything lately. <laughs> Or if, if Dennis Farley, if you'd like to go on and win it, it'd be really nice because I know you're coming here and I can just be like, here, I don't have to ship it to you. Because <laughs> the shipping on these big airplanes kills me sometimes. I don't remember what we paid. I think I paid almost 60 or $70 to ship that last airplane. So, yeah, I got to figure out. I shipped it through you. That's what I did last time. Yeah, no, I remember how we did it. Anyway, we'll figure it out one way or the other. Um, how we're going to ship the airplane. Unfortunately, since I have to pay the shipping, sorry, farmer man, but it's going to be for U.S. people. Uh, it's just, it's too expensive for me to ship it further than that. I mean, once they get out of the country, you, I'm talking more than the airplane usually for shipping. Well, it may not be more than the airplane, but it's going to be hundreds of dollars to ship these things, unfortunately. So, we'll... We'll have to figure that out. We might do one of those if somebody outside of the country wins, offer them to ship it via themselves. I might be willing to do something like that. But I pay the shipping. Yeah, that's what we probably would do, Joseph. If somebody outside the U.S. wins, I'd probably ask them to pay the shipping just because it's so much. Um, it'd still be way less than buying the airplane. But, yeah, I might have to do that. Anyway. We'll figure it out when we come there. Wes might have to get into some build a new barn. Yeah, that's the truth, pay it forward. I would love to build a new barn. I've been kicking it around for a while if I could find you're a little you're a little short on the five thousand. That might buy the concrete for the new building, but uh, I need about twenty five thousand dollars what I need to find to build a new shop. <laughs> Have you priced stuff lately? They're crazy expensive now. <laughs> yeah, make the winner come to the event and pick it up. Who knows? I might give it away at the event. If we're there, who knows? We're, we're only a month away, though. I don't, I don't quite see us getting to 5K at, uh, in a month, but who knows? All it takes is one good video. Ghost, RC Jet George, welcome to the Boozer Barracks, sir. We're proud to have you here, and I hope to see you around more. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, Gav. All right, well, you guys are here to see me take this out of the box. Let's start sliding the cover off real quick. I'm going to have to get Lori over here for a second. These darn E-Flight planes are in there, man. They're in there. Normally, if I open both sides, though, I don't, is, it, is it sliding? I don't think it's going to be. Yeah. So I'll push. You pull. Yeah. Let's get this thing out the box. Now, I will tell you, anybody that comes to the Mary Boozer fly-in, there are airplanes getting given away there. Lots. So, Horizon sending planes, Motion's bringing planes to give away. Uh, I know RC, uh, not RC, RC Informer was getting FMS to send a couple planes. Uh, so, there will be airplanes at the, I don't know what I do with my knife, event. Uh, Giveaways. It was in the hole. Aha! Uh -huh. There it is. George Watts, thanks man. I really appreciate that. You know guys, lately you guys are the ones making it happen to where I can have these airplanes here to show you and uh, fix a computer <laughs> that was <laughs> jacked up. <laughs> you know, the, the funny thing is, is all the stuff behind the scenes that costs money, cameras and microphones and all this other stuff, that's the part that kills you on this. Um, don't get me wrong, the airplanes are expensive too, but we've had some beautiful sponsors lately helping us out. So anyway, Laurie, let's go top shot and let's start busting into this thing. Papa's going to have to come back eventually and be part of this again. We miss him. I need I need my guy to come build all these airplanes. Pilot Ryan's got Bobby the Builder. I got 
Papa Boober. That's right, you heard me right, Papa Boober. Ooh, I'm stuck to something. Oh, baby, I loved, loved my old timber. Anybody that's actually gone flying with me before knows that the old timber was my go-to plane. I flew that more than anything I owned. Uh, and you really can't go wrong with the timber. You guys that have been looking for a fun plane, now I won't be putting these on. These are the leading edge slats. And I did not like them on my old timber. Who knows, maybe this one's different and I'll end up with them on, but uh, on the old airplane I did not like these as much. And uh, I probably won't put these on again. So here's the leading edge slats. They look really cool, but they kill your roll rate. And I'm kind of a wild and crazy flyer. So yeah, I don't know if I'd be putting these back on again. But here's the other one. Now, if you are actually going to just try and fly slow flight, these do make a big difference. If you want STOL and not doing loops and rolls and crazy stuff, these do actually make a pretty big difference. Who knows? Maybe I'll put them back on. I don't know. It's hard. It's a hard decision. We got our wing spar. Now, they give you a metal rod with this one which did not come with the original timber. I believe this is for the tail for if you're running 4S. Horizon Hobby's been doing this with a lot of their airplanes lately. They give you a metal spar or a carbon spar for the tail. Uh, so if that's what this is, I gotta make sure I haven't got to the manual yet. But if it is, I'm gonna definitely be running the metal spar because I will probably run 4S all the time. And then like we said, our carbon spar. Maybe, if I can get into it. Man, that is some good stick'em on this stuff. No, Savinia. There you go. I bet you've never seen one. It's a spar. Sweet. I'm still waiting, too, for the Twinber. I think that's going to be the next one, or the Bi Timber. We've got, we've got to have another timber eventually that's a twin engine one. But I, I don't know, would a, would a twinber be like a totter? Otter? <laughs> Beautiful airplane, guys. I know this is going to fly great. Like I said, you know, the big changes here aren't the wings. Uh, the wings are the standard wings off of the old timber. But... Uh, the fuselage is going to be a lot different on this new one. And it's beautiful though. I always loved it that they did, you know, the actual control surfaces are recessed down in there like a real airplane. Same thing with the flaps. They uh, slot and key in and then come down to where that air can actually pass through here. It really does make a big difference. And then it's, it's super clean how they mount the servos inside the wing on this. Super clean. Any of you guys have timbers? I know you have to. Everybody has to have a timber at least once. You know, I don't remember mine having this spar on the original version, actually. There's a spar right here in the aileron that I don't remember being there on the original one. Also, this R wasn't on the original one either. Funny, I am noticing some little differences on here. So the wing is a little bit different. Hmm. Cool. Coolio. Any questions? Did I miss anything? Pay it forward. Loves his timber. I agree, pay it forward. This is one of those airplanes everybody should have. It's like a Mustang. Everybody should have at least one. I still want to try a 3D timber of some sort. I haven't had a chance yet, but I imagine they're great. The elevator halves. And E-Flight's really doing a good job of making it now where you really don't use glue on these airplanes anymore either. They're all screwed together, so this is going to key together, and I can already see you screw this on. So it's really cool how they're doing away from the glue. 
I think they're even trying to get away from screws on a lot of them, to be real honest. Okay, so this opens somehow. Let's see. I have to be smarter than the box. Oh, okay. I got it upside down, I guess. Let's see here. Dude. Timber X is great. Yeah, man, I really do want to try Timber X. I really like the green one, though, so I think I'd go for the no light version, just so I could get the green paint job. I like the lights of the night timber, but I like the paint job better on the uh, OG Timber X. It's the one airplane you can get any flavor you want out of one airframe, but yeah. Turbo Timber, 1.5. Love the lights on this airplane too. They always look so good in the evening. Now the tires are different on this one than the original. These are way softer. They're still foam, but they're way softer than my original timber tires were. They even feel different. Yeah, they have made a difference in these tires. They look similar, but they're way squishier than the original tires were. Sassy West a lot. Love the turbo timber no matter how windy it is. Exactly. That was always my favorite part of the timber was no matter what the wind was, I knew I could go out and have a good time flying my timber. Always. Now I have heard they, they changed the uh, this too somehow. I don't remember how this went together. I never broke my original landing gear, I know some guys had said they broke these before. I never had an issue out of my original timber. So, if they did change it, great. But I don't know. I, I can tell you though, that wheel, I'm not kidding, that's way squishier foam. It's still a foam of some sort, but it's just, it's way squishier than it used to be. These used to have no give. Hmm. I wasn't expecting that. Let's see, that's attached, that's attached. Okay, let's get the wing out then, the other wing. We did get the bind and fly version. Anytime I get a Horizon airplane, I always opt to pay the extra 20 or 30 bucks, whatever it is, to get the receiver, because it's, it's just easier, it's cheaper, it comes programmed. Like I said, this time I'm going to leave these plastic pieces in. See, it comes with this for you guys that haven't had a timber before. They all come with these little notches glued in. If you want to put the leading edge slats on, you pull these out and you glue the slat onto the front. One other thing I'd like to see maybe somehow done in the future, if Jason's watching this by any chance or anybody from Horizon, I'd love to see them make another version of this where these screw on. So if you don't want them, you can take them off. And if you do want them, you can put them on. Or if you could figure a way for these to click in and click out. You know, they're doing a lot of that lately where the, the pieces click in or click out. Now, something else I'm noticing, I don't remember this on my original timber, but this whole wing is covered in a clear sticker that wraps all the way around. So yes, you have the vinyl, but do you see that? The whole wing is actually sheeted in a vinyl material. The whole wing. Now, I believe that is to strengthen and rigid this wing up, but I know that's going to also help protect you when you're bonking it into stuff, having that on there. But yeah, there's a clear film over this entire airplane. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. The whole wing is sheeted in a sticker. It's not just the stickers anymore. But yeah, that would have been my biggest thing on the timber, is if I could, I could make one change to this whole airplane from all the time I had with it, I'd really like to see these be clip-on, clip-off instead of glue-in. Because, I mean, you put them on and you're kind of stuck with them then. And if they ever do fall off, which I broke my original ones, hit them on a door if I remember right, uh, then you have to rip them off and then you have holes in the wings where you glued everything in. So, anyway. Not a big deal. Uh, the timbers come with the float set, like I told you guys. So you get the wheels and the floats in these. And I've lost my knife. There it is. We'll open them real quick. I still have my original timber floats, which I'm sure are the exact same. So if I ever damage these, 
because uh, I forgot to give them to the guy that bought my old timber from me. When this one showed up on my doorstep, there's a guy that's wanted my original timber for forever. And uh, I called him up. I was like, come get the original timber. It's all yours. So he came and got it, and he's been flying it and enjoying it. But I forgot to give him the floats, but he doesn't live too far away. So if he wants them, I'll give them to him. So there's your float set. We do live in Florida, so I imagine we can use these. The floats actually look a little bit different. I don't remember this little keel being on the original floats. I have them in there. I could look at them, actually. But I don't remember that plastic piece being there. Hmm. And there's actually, if you can see it, there's a plastic skid embedded in this right there. So if you hit a rock or something, you're not going to tear up the whole bottom of this. Cool. Cool deal. Miss anything in the chat, Miss Lori? We're just having a TA meeting in here. A TA meeting? Turbo or timber awareness. Timber awareness? Yeah. There's, there's about 15 models of it now. Air Marshal started it. He was like, hi, I'm Dave. I have a timber. I have a timber problem. You know, I haven't tried the mini turbo timber yet either, but I have the original, tur uh, the original timber UMX, and that plane is so much fun. I've always wanted to get the floats for it. Um, that I just haven't, but yeah, guys, there's there's a flavor of timber for everybody, and like I said, we need, you guys got to back me up. Uh, I don't know what kind of glue Horizon Hobby uses, but I would like to know this white stuff. It's actually squishy, but yeah, I don't know what they use. They glue all the receivers in with this too, but I bet it's some good, good stuff. I'd like to figure it out. It almost looks like, uh, like Walcock, but... Curious. We have to go get the other floats just to see. Does somebody want to know? Pretty sure they're different. All right, hang on a second. If you got a second, I'll get the other floats real quick. I got them. I wish I had my other timber here still right now. We can compare, but hang on, I'll get them. Lori, talk to the people. Hi, people. I don't know what to talk about. Let's just find out. I still have my OG Timbers in the package. Let's look. So here we go, Lord. Let's dig in. So this is the original Timber floats for guys that have been wanting to know. If there's any change. I've seen some small changes here and there, but... Well, you know what? It does have that plastic. There's only one way to tell, right? V1. Eh, they look very similar. I don't actually see any difference. There you go. I thought there was, but nope. They are exactly the same. They did have that keel on the other one. This one's a little older and turning yellow up in here. Right there. But yeah, they're actually exactly the same. So there you go. So, like I said, if you have an original set of timber floats and you get a new timber and you break a float, now you know they'll fit. Wes is such a dork. You're not kidding. Whoever said that? Was that my wife? Or was Might, that have been. Else? Might have been me. Anyway, so floats are the same. Oh, yeah. This is going to be all the float parts and pieces to put them together. I'm not going to open this right now because I don't want to lose any of these. Who knows? Maybe I'll put some red floats on my uh, timber because I have them. Is it mix and match? That's right. Maybe I'll put some red floats on my new turbo timber. You know, you can put <laughs> pieces from each one. So, yeah. <laughs> Stickers are different colors, so they're not exactly the same. This is true. This is very true. What, Laurie? Oh, he saw that, yeah. He, he did make a good point. 
What if I was colorblind though? Then they'd look the same still, wouldn't they? Uh, it depends on what kind of colorblind you are. Oh, that's true. Let's see, I'm trying to get this out now. And it's just kind of fighting me. Because there's this wood block. Eh, eh, eh. Sorry, hold that box. Or do that. There we go. Slow and sexy Captain Blush. Oh, 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 oh. They always say they want it slow and sexy, Lori. Don't give me that look. You're dark. I know. Slow and sexy. The plastic piece on the floats is a splash deflector for the prop. I will say my turbo timber might get some paint up on the front because it is definitely a yellow or white. And you know me guys, I know how to paint. It's nothing huge, but that's definitely a different color. Do love the uh, PT6 front end. And the other thing you guys know is if you've seen my crop duster video, I really want to rust these up and make them look like a, a, you've seen them, where these will turn all rusty on any airplane that ever actually has a turboprop on the front. These never stay silver. They turn like a rusty color. I'm definitely going to do that to this. But uh, I dig it. I dig it. it. It's so funny to me knowing what my original timber looks like. It looks like they just literally went whoop and put a bigger nose on it. <laughs> but yeah, can't go wrong with the old timber. It's got hinged, actually hinged hinges all around, which is great because we are not going to be gentle on this bad boy. Lights, top and bottom, your nav lights. I always loved the landing lights up in the nose of my old timber. These are so bright when it's coming at you. Let's see. Uh, we'll come back to this here in just a second. Let me take the rest of it out of the box. And so we can get rid of the box. Cameras don't really like the white phone. Ding dang, I lost my knife again. What? We're gonna have us a drinking game every time Wesley loses a knife. Take a shot. Take a shot. Here it is. Oh, there it is. Or it says sorry. I'm pretty bad about that too. People be walking sideways around the houses watching this. We're adult only, I can say that. Anyway. There's the other wheel. Squishy tires. Oh yeah, there you go. And it's got a three blade prop now instead of a two blade. I forgot about that. I wonder if you could put this three bladed prop on the old timber if the ESC would handle it. Just curious. Gotta love a three blader. I wonder if this is actually the same propeller that's on the air tractor. So if you have an air tractor and the timber turbo, uh, if the props interchange, because that really looks like the same spinner and uh, propeller that's on the air tractor. I'm gonna have to take a look at that, because I think it would be. So all the 2200 or 1200 millimeter warbirds like the P51, the P47, and there was another one. Anyway, the three of them that had four bladed props, you could put the same props fit the other airplanes. And I always loved that they did that. Nope, the ESC won't handle it, but you could change the ESC. <laughs> Which I did on mine. I changed the ESC on my old timber so I could run 4S on it. <laughs> I actually changed the ESC on my timber, on my uh, Spitfire, my Corsair, and my P47. Even though they recommend, they say you can run it on it, I just went on ahead and changed to the 50 amps in all of them, and then I could run 4S all I wanted on all of them. But now, they've come around and started making these, and I'd love 
love to see a uh, 1.2 P47 come again, uh, you know, with a little bit hotter motor and a different paint job on it. Green with invasion stripes. Jason, if you're listening. <laughs> Let's see here. There's only one piece left in the box. I don't know how I'm going to get it out without just breaking the box. Like that. Just like that. More pieces for the, uh, whatchamacallit, the floats. <laughs> what? The whatchamacallit. The whatchamacallit, the bobbers. All right. So, now I got this out of the way where I can actually show you this better. So, here you go. There's your inside. You've got your uh, light controller right here for all the blinky lights all over the airplanes. Uh, the one thing that was always kind of a pain in the butt, it's not that big a deal, but with all the new E-Flight planes, I really like those quick connects, and it would be real easy maybe in a future timber to mount one of those like quick connect boards here to where when the wing went on, it just like snapped in. So instead of having to put all these on, you know, when you get to the field, it would be snap the wing on, put two screws in, and go fly. And when you got done for the day, for you guys that have to put it in the uh, car, I'd love to see the same thing they're doing on, like, the Mustang. What was the other one? The F-18. No, the F-18 didn't have it. The Mustang. Something else had it. No, uh, that one didn't have it. Uh, a couple of the new airplanes, though, they have, like, a little board that goes across here with a pin. And the pin from, and with a hole, and then there's the... There's like four servos mounted on the wing and then a pin. And so when you take the wing, you just put it on there and then you go and it pops in. And then you put your two screws in and it just makes things so much easier. But yeah, love to see that. Same prop as the air tractor. There you go, Joe Pellegrino. I thought it was. I looked at it. Yeah, anyway, love it. Yes, these are the uh, Metal Gear digital servos in the uh, Turbo Timber. If anybody's needing to know that, I think I saw a question for that. Yes, these are the Metal Gear digital servos. One other thing I'd like to see if they ever make another timber version. Mm -hmm. Top loader, please. Please. That's already been shown on here. Yeah. So, the one bad thing is it's still a bottom feeder, guys. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, but it is a pain. I agree. I'd love to see them come out with another timber with the battery hatch on top. But, uh, yeah. It was just always kind of tight. Let's see here. 2200. I mean, you, you guys that have these know, but trying to get a 2200 in there, it's doable. But it's just, it's always been tight. So there's a, there's a 2200 3S in there. Um, you might be able to get a 3200 in here. Let's see, 3200. This is a 3S 3200 Spectrum Smart. Yeah, you could get it in there. There's a 3200. Now, you can still fly this on 3S. Now, let me see if I can find my 4S's. Dog's about to throw up. I think this is wishing, but we'll try. 5,000 for us? Nope. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> uh, 2,200, we know that'll fit. Just while we're playing though, here's a 3,200 4S. It would go. Battery straps are all in the way right now. Let's see. How'd you get the 4S into the original temper? 2200 I could fit in there all day. 4S, a 3200 will not go in there, but a 3S, 2200 will. So we're just playing here just so you guys can see. There's the uh, 4S, 2200. It goes in no problem. But yeah, it looks like you're going to have a hard time getting much bigger in here than that. I might be able to get that down in there. If I were to work it a little bit, it's the, uh, I don't think so guys. I think the 3200 is not going to go because look at it hit right there. But hey, I know you guys want to know sometimes. 
That was a 4,000. Well, this is a 3,200. I'm not cheating. Eh. I might be able to get it in there if I push. Okay, I got it. So, yeah, you can get a 3,200 in there. It's just tight. It's very tight getting that 32 in there. But it will go. Uh, yep. I imagine you'd get a pretty long flight time with a 3200. Now I'm never going to get it out of there. I did. Yep. There you go. Alright, let's put this one in there. Right. There you go. Fits perfect. <laughs> nope, it won't fit. <laughs> but yeah. No, I got it out. There you go. 3200 will go, guys. If you were wondering if you had one of these, it does go. So there you go. It's sweet. I like it. Did a little different front end on here. A little sexier. A little cleaner. Definitely going to be painting the prop like I did on my, uh, you guys that saw it on my air tractor video, I'm going to do the same thing to this one. I think gray prop, uh, white tips, do the stacks up, kind of like that burnt color. I think it would look really cool on here. It's those little touches, you know. Pretty sweet looking airplane. Anyway, alright, well that gets it out of the box. Let's come back to the front view. I need to stand. I'd use my new stand, but it's currently being held up. Yeah, there you go. Sweet. Let's comment section it back, Miss Laura. 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 So, any questions? Strap it to the bottom. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Airplane pieces. Anybody's wanting to see any of this stuff, y'all just keep on reminding me as we go. I know. I accidentally hit a thing and the dog freaked out. I was trying to get the F-18 in shot, too. Maybe a little car action. Yeah, there you go. Bring this back over here, maybe. Hey. Who's excited for the new Top Gun? Even though they pushed it back to next year, dang it. Yep, it does one click on each side instead of three. What did I miss? Uh, someone put one of the wing clips, like you were talking about, with the center of the connectors. Oh, did somebody put one on here? I don't know if they put it up. I don't think they put it on the. Hang on, go back to it. Like I said, I know they did it on the P51, and I really liked that for like the wing tips. Actually, they did the main wing, too. I think it had, like, four connectors that went up like this into it. And then your wing tips slid on, and then they popped in. And it was just really cool how they did that. There it is. The wing connector electrodynamics makes a great set for the timber. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Push it in there. There's no wall behind it. I got it in there, Airvex RC. It fit. I don't know about the 4,000, though. I think it's going to be a little on the tight side. What airplane do you have for Papa to work on when he gets home? Papa is beginning surprised back also. Beginning a surprise back also. Oh, that's right. I forgot about Papa's surprise. Well, Papa, we've got... Uh, the Phoenix, it's a Phoenix, I think. Am I right? Is that the Tower Hobby Ram? No, that was the, yeah, it was a Phoenix, Phoenix. Models. Phoenix Models, Westinghouse, uh, or Westland, not Westinghouse. <laughs> What's a Westinghouse? <laughs> Westland, Lysander. <laughs> Guys, my brain is a little <laughs> off, you know. But, uh, yeah, we've got that coming. Papa's going to put that together when he gets back. I've got him the motor, the ESC, all the servos. I've got the receiver. Everything's in a box ready for when he gets here. I'm going to hand it to him and he's going to go. Uh, 
The HE111 motors and ESCs are here. He's already put the servos in it, so he's just got to finish that. Uh, storage. The storage. I've got to just finish putting the new receiver in it. I did take the BEC out this week, and, and I've kind of been rerouting a couple things in the airplane to just make it a little bit better. Uh, who knows right now? I'd like to do a couple more Nexa planes. I've actually been looking at getting maybe a Seagull airplane from... Uh, uh, Legends Hobby, they've got some really neat stuff right now that you know nobody else has, and I really like the way some of those Legend planes look. So, or Seagull, yeah, we'll keep you busy, Papa. Don't worry. And I've got your uh, twin otter when you get back to put your floats on. So yeah, we'll be keeping him busy. Michael Frykes, good thanks. Just went to their site. B twenty five. That's right, Papa. I put your. Uh, B25's BEC on top of it, so it's waiting for you to get back. Uh, and he's got the FMS Tiger Cat props for it, so that'll be really cool. Um, Papa's going to be busy. And then I've got a trailer to finish before the fun fly because I've got to have somewhere nice and air conditioned to sleep while everybody's out there. Wes, do you save the boxes your planes come in? Not really. I used to, and it got to where they were taking over. I literally had one room in my house full of airplane boxes, and it got out of hand, and I had to get rid of them. So I have been slowly getting rid of all of the airplane boxes. So I, I end up, I, if, if I don't keep something, there's always somebody around me that wants to buy it. So I never need to ship airplanes anywhere. Uh, there was like one exception to that was Dennis wanted my uh, Hawk or uh, my Sea Fury from Motion RC, but he's coming out here next month, and I said, "Hey, I'll just hold on to it for you." And this was, gosh, I think he was talking about buying it in February now. And I said, "I'll just hold on to it till I see it." Joe and all are here, and sure enough, it's been sitting in there on the shelf waiting for him for when he comes. So he's got an airplane, but yeah, it, it got out of hand with the airplane boxes and my wife kind of looked at me and said I'm going to kill you or get rid of these things so I got rid of them. Yep. They were taking over her office, my office, they were everywhere, airplane boxes so I had to get rid of them. And I am i really don't sell my airplanes. I fly them, fly them, fly them. You know I've sold airplanes this year but a lot of them were discontinued. Uh, they really weren't helping the channel in any way. You know I liked them still but if an airplane isn't sold anymore, it's really hard for me to go out and fly it and show it to you guys because then you go, hey, I want to get that Nitro Planes B-17 or whatever you're flying. And it's like, well, you can't. They don't make it anymore. So when, when stuff goes out of production, that's when I let it go um, normally. So, But for the most part, I try and keep all of my airplanes. Now, a lot of the airplanes you've seen on our channel... Uh, weren't always ours. Uh, our friend Kevin let us borrow a lot of his airplanes to do the unboxings for, um, maiden flights, and you know, Kevin got an airplane that was all set up and ready to go handed to him was what he got out of the deal, and he got to see us uh, loving every minute of it and sharing it with you, so you know, it worked out really great, and we really miss Kevin being here, but you know, now if it wasn't for Horizon and, you know, Buddy RC and the other companies getting behind us, Horizon's been really good to us. Uh, it, there'd be no way I could keep up with it. Uh, these airplanes, getting them out to you guys and showing you the newest stuff um, without companies getting behind us and giving us airplanes to show you guys. So, you know, we really are thankful for them. And uh, I have to say, really... Uh, you know, Horizon's been so nice to us too. They they send them and say no strings attached. Say whatever you need to about them. Um, you know, if you have an issue, let us know. And we'll do what we can to fix it. But yeah, uh, I I've really enjoyed being a, a Horizon affiliate. I mean, like I said, and I, they don't care if I say some stuff. Like I said, I said I'd like to see some of the stuff changed. I want the timber to be a top loader. I want it to have the stuff, but at the end of the day, I still enjoy this airplane, you know. There's there's really not a lot of stuff bad right now. You know, Motion's really making good airplanes lately. Uh, and they, well, they've always made good airplanes. Horizon's making good airplanes. It, it's a great time to be in the hobby. Um, 
Buddy now. There's that new Buddy RC. You guys that want to try any of their stuff. I've had two of them now. I've seen several other people get them. You know, uh, the Patrench Kicks got them. George Watts down in our uh, chat, he decided to get one. And uh, he's been liking it. I've seen several guys get them and really enjoy them. So I think that Buddy, or Buddy RC OMP Hobby is going to be a winner, man. Uh, really glad we ended up partnering up with them on that. Uh, I do have to eventually get out there and try and fly that new helicopter they sent me. I'm a little terrified of it. I haven't flown a helicopter in forever. Never been that good at it, but, you know, they really wanted me to do it, so. Is yeah, Gab, I agree. Flight, I'll be running for my life. Yeah, Lori's going to be running as that helicopter's chasing her around. Uh, but, yeah. Oh, Gavin, he's got him an F-18. We're going to have to fly them together now. Gavin, what number is your F-18 so I make sure mine's different? I think Rich is number one, if I remember right. I think he's number one. <laughs> Anybody caught that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Tim Nelson, they've been great to me. Yeah, I, I like I said, most of these companies now, you know, not to bash anybody, I've never had good luck with uh, Banana, though. That would be the one I would kind of stay away from, you know. And that's what you guys come here for is to hear that stuff, you know. I've never had good luck with them. Um, bang good. Uh, mine's 13. Okay, I don't think I'll pick that number. I'm good. Um, so, you know, Bang Good reached out to me and they wanted to start working together and sending stuff. And I kind of, I, I said no. Uh, I just, I didn't feel right partnering with them for stuff. So, you know, it's not that I want to do everything out there. Uh, I, I still have that, uh, you know, we're doing such good quality airplanes lately and, and cars and, you know, everything else that when somebody reaches out to me and it's like, eh, I don't know. So that's a company that I still won't really do business with. Um, I do that every time I hear number one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> there you go. RC Informer's here. He got here just in time for my joke. So we're going to get out and fly this with Gavin and RC Informer. So I need to not be number 5 or 13. I'm good to go there. I should be lame and be number 7 like everybody else is going to be on the two-seater. <laughs> Lori's like, no. SpongeBob's ruined me. Yeah. Man, you missed out, Rich. We got it all out of the box already. What the heck, man? I'm not as brave as you. I've put them together on film before and, and live. I just have heck doing it live. So, you just have to wait for the build video for me or assembly video. Don't call it a build video, whatever you do. I'm doing balsa now, though, so I can say build some of mine. Four frights with my turbo timber so far. And every flight has been like flying in real flight 9.5. Yeah, David, this is really a sweet airplane. Uh, well, I don't know about this one yet. I haven't flown it, but my old timber was one of my favorites. I literally took it to the field almost every time I went flying. And it was because if I got out there and... Uh... uh if I got out there and it was windy, I could still fly it. So that was my big deal. Anyway, I do have a few banana planes. I'm not saying that. I mean, I've got... It's just not the first company I would pick from right now. I, I would normally pick Horizon or Motion right now if I were going to go out and buy an airplane. But I have the Banana B-25, and, and you know, it's a beautiful... beautiful it's, it's the best foam B-25 on the market, hands down. Uh, and if you want a big, beautiful B-25, you got to go get it from Banana. And they had them on sale not too long ago for $350, bucks, and that was a smoking deal when they were on sale. Uh, I don't know if they still are for the kit versions or not, but if they are, I highly recommend it. It's a great airplane. Um, and if you follow Rich's uh, build video on that airplane, he really addresses a lot of the issues that were with it. And we've done them all on ours, and I think the airplane's going to be one heck of a good flying airplane. I haven't ever had a Banana Hobby E uh, jet. I've seen a lot of them crash, though. All of my airplanes 
It's the one I fly the most, yeah. I have to agree, out of all the airplanes I own, my old Timber, we actually put a glider tow on our old Timber too. We never used it, but it was on there. Um, and I think I, I forgot to take it out when I sold it, so we're going to have to make another one for this one. 12 channel A10. Balsa USA biplane. Yeah, Dad's got an oldie but a goldie coming. You know, we have an old uh, Stearman, too, that's Balsa, which I can't, I don't remember. Dad, do you remember what uh, brand that Stearman is? So I got a motor for it. Funny enough, another Balsa plane down that track. We have one of the old Balsa planes that I had as a kid that I was, we were looking at putting it back together as an electric now, and I have the perfect motor for it now. It's like a 32, and uh, I think I have the servos for it, and I think I have everything to put it together. So that one might also be coming back from the grave. Aussie Informa. Welcome back, sir. Oh, RC Informer is officially a member of Lark's RC, so I saw he went flying today. Welcome to the club, sir. It's slowly becoming the place to fly at. What is it, Papa? I don't remember what it's called, that thing Dad's bringing back with him. It's a big biplane. Big biplane. It's going to be fun. Quarter scale, Balsa USA, Fokker DV. Two. That'd be cool. I always wanted the uh, was it Hangar Nine? Uh, made the Sopwith Camel, the big giant one. I always liked that airplane for a. Uh, oh, hmm. What? Kyushu. Okay, don't know what that is. Kosho. <laughs> I don't know. He's speaking Japanese to me. I don't speak Japanese. Might be Chinese. I have no idea. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we got a lot of really cool stuff coming though over the next few weeks. Uh, I definitely want to go meet up with Rich over at Lark's. Uh, I think we need to put these two F-18s up together. Uh, I was telling him I think it'd be fun to take the Flightline Corsair and the new FMS Corsair and do a Versus video together of those. Um, I know he has a Timber also. I think he has a Timber. Rich, don't you have a Timber? Me and him have a... <laughs> a lot of the same planes, and it's always fun when me and Rich can fly together, because we really, we really fly formation and acrobatics together very well. So it's a lot of fun when we do get to go meet up, and it, it, it's always good to go out and fly with somebody, you know. Anyway, twelve A ten, like model A ten, who makes the B twenty five West we talked about. Uh, the LX, it's LX, it's distributed by Banana Hobbies is who makes the uh, B-25. No Timber, really, I can't believe it. Tell them to send you the Timber X and I'll give you the Turbo Timber, Rich. I want the 3D one next. And you wouldn't like it, so there you go, we can trade. <laughs> Manual for it, can't find it, I don't know. What, uh, Ken Sprouse, what are you looking for? Manual for something. Balsa EDF. Just trying to kind of read the comments now, guys. Rich doesn't have a timber. I know. I can't believe it either. I really figured he had one. Man, Rich, you gotta have one timber in your life. It's 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 a must-have airplane. One of the 15 different kinds. You gotta have one at least. You know, the other one I'd really like to have. If I could really go out and buy the Timber I want, I want the Timber XL, or whatever they call it now, the big balsa one. That would be so cool. Because I know how good this airplane flies, and one that's like 110 inches would be fantastic. Ma manual for the A-10 from LX. I have no idea. Selling the Vintique? I guess I missed something. Hmm. Came in from flying the night Timber X. See, there you go. Everybody needs a Timber. Even GB knows. See? Reviews from where the magic happens. <laughs> I 
Yeah, it's a good flying airplane. I, I'd like to try the night one. And it'd be cool to even put lights in this one. But yeah, I imagine Joe Nall this year, there's going to be 10,000 of those night timber X's. I remember last Joe Nall I was at, it was like right after the night Radian had came out. And they were everywhere at night. Everywhere. Anyway. Your suspension ends tomorrow. Good. They shouldn't have suspended you in the first place if some old fart walked out there and didn't tell you. That's his fault. Should have been paying more attention to what was flying around in the air. I know better than to walk out in the middle of a field when somebody's flying a jet. But I guess they didn't. But whatever. Love my Timber X. Yeah. Yeah, I know, guys. I'm telling you. The Timber is a, it's a fantastic uh, airframe. And, and like I said, everybody should have at least one of these. And I'm not telling you that because it's, you know, go out and buy it. I'm telling you because they really are that good of an airplane. No matter what the wind is. You can go out and have fun. It'll take off in three feet out of tall grass. It'll land in three feet. Uh, it's just, it's so sweet. Yeah, Rich did do a good job on that flight video of the B-25. It's one of his better videos. It's older. He's got the music playing. Uh, he had it cut up with some on on it. It's a good video. You should check it out, guys. I think Rich is actually a uh, moderator, so he might be able to drop a link if he's still in there. But yeah. Well, guys, that gets, I mean, this is wrapped up for tonight. Don't forget, we've got the fun fly coming up 21st, 22nd of November. If you guys are in the Florida area, please, please come out, fly with us. Horizon Hobby is sending stuff for us to give away. Motion RC will be there. James will be there. He's going to be bringing stuff to give away at the event. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you guys, it's going to be the event this year. You want to be there. You want to come hang out with me and Rich and uh, RC Air Marshall. Uh, we're all going to be there. I don't know if any of the other YouTube families coming. Uh, Pilot Ryan has already said he can't make it. It's the week before Thanksgiving and he's got to do kid stuff. So I understand it. I respect it. Um, anyway, yeah. I, I can't wait for the event, though, guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to try and go live out there. I'm going to try and go live maybe tomorrow. Uh, it may be members only, but I'm going to be out at the Schlock Car Track in Lakeland. I really want to see if I can fix our phone for live chats. For some reason, I've tried Lori's. I've tried mine. They're all kind of funky. And I may try doing like a members only live stream tomorrow at the racetrack and then maybe we'll wrap it up with a full live stream for everybody if it's all working um, but I really want to figure out why we can't go live on location without having so many problems and we've got to get that straightened out for these events because I really wanted to be able to do that so I wish I could make it yeah you know GB if you didn't live all the way over there on the other side of the country it'd be a little easier but yeah, you definitely would have to fly out here for it, which you could. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, with the age of day of Corona, though, it's not that easy to just fly across the country anymore. Mm -hmm. We have a family for Thanksgiving week. Oh, man, George, that's too bad. But I mean, it's good that you're going to get to see your family, but uh, I wish you could still come hang out with us for the weekend. Yeah. Timothy Nelson's got it right. I think it's time to go tonight. So, uh, guys, I've really enjoyed you being here tonight. I hope you enjoy the beautiful timber. Be watching for the assembly video coming in the near few weeks. Uh, <coughs> we're going to have the assembly video coming on the F-18 pretty soon. Uh, and we've got more slot cars and more boats and planes and cars and trucks. Oh, my. Everything you can think of. Uh, hopefully it doesn't rain, yeah. Uh, if it rains, it's just Florida, you know. So it is what it is, but hopefully it doesn't. Uh, if it does end up raining, we'll all sit around and cook hot dogs and have a good time either way. So if we, if we can't fly, I promise I'll be there and we'll camp out and have a good time because we're going to bring, Dad's bringing his RV. Me and Lori are going to be staying in our little trailer. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to camp out there at the event, uh, and there's hotels all around that area. So uh, I know we're going to be out there hanging out until probably 9 or 10 o'clock at night, every night. Who knows, I might even get wild and stay up till midnight. 
there will be adult beverages consumed that evening, and uh, yeah, it'll be a it'll be a good time, guys. It'll it'll be a real good time. So I hope as many of you come that can, if not for just flying, but to come hang out in person. That's the part I'm looking forward more to anything. I can fly these things anytime I want. The thing I'm really looking forward to is face to face with Dennis, face to face with Dave Air Marshall, face to face with any of you guys that come to the event and I get to meet. It's always the coolest thing to me. We went to an event like two weeks ago in Tampa and a guy came up to me and he's like, oh my gosh, I've been watching the show and I, I love it. And I, I, yeah, and it was just the coolest thing getting to meet people that actually watch us and know what it is. Yeah. There's a hotel literally 30 seconds. So yeah, there you go. And it's probably pretty reasonable in price because it's in Lakeland. It's it, hotel rooms are not crazy. It's it's not so close to Disney that it's crazy, and it's far enough away that they stay cheaper. So, yeah, there's hotels all around the event, guys. So, no issues there if you don't want to camp. I am bringing an air conditioner and a generator, and I'm going to sleep comfortably at night. This is Florida, not. North Dakota or wherever you're watching from so be prepared to sweat when you come even though it's going to be uh, November uh, it's probably going to be 80 degrees every day I could be completely wrong and we could have a freak weekend where it gets into the 60s but at the at the worst it could be 60 degrees it won't be any colder than that um, more than likely it's going to be probably 60s at night 75 to 80 during the day during that event so uh, it's going to be beautiful and it probably won't be windy but no promises i'm going to bring something like this just in case it is so i can fly something um, but normally we have pretty good weather in florida our windy days to guys that are actually in windy parts of the country aren't that bad like a windy day to me is 10 miles an hour now and, uh, you know, when I used to live in Texas, we all would say, wind? What wind? It's 10 miles an hour out there. Let's go fly it. Unless it was 20 miles an hour, we weren't, we weren't flying. But, yeah. Anyway, guys, I really do appreciate you coming by tonight. Uh, like I said, tomorrow, slot car video. And then we're going to have more airplanes all week. Keep on coming back. Keep on watching. And we will see you in the next episode. Thank you, guys. Five, four, three. Two, one, get out there and fly with your friends.